Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. This is the night that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Master. All things are working to the good, to those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. Amen. <laughs> so, glory to God. Oh, ain't that something? Praise the Lord. Second Timothy chapter three. Bachala mi arama ka farboko sa shanda kasia. The word of life will penetrate every part. Every part. When we release the word, its purpose is to penetrate. Amen. The word says that when we release God's word, it doesn't return void. As long as it's backed by the anointing. It's a phenomenal time that we are living in right now. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. Let's speak it together. But know this, that the, in the last days, perilous times will come. Well, we see that constantly, don't we? Amen. Lovers of money, boasters. <laughs> Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Unloving. Unforgiving. Slanders without self-control. Brutal despisers of good. Traitors. Headstrong. Haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. Why? Because they're carrying an entity. A demonic entity. You know, when I was in the hospital praying for a woman one time, and this other person came up to visit her, and I knew instantly she was a witch. And she had all these charms on her and stuff. And every time she went over to touch the girl that was in the bed, that girl screamed. <gasps> and I wanted to grab her hand and just push her aside and say, what the heck are you doing? And the Lord said, don't. He said, stand at the end of the bed and fold your arms. And I stood at the end of the bed and I folded my arms. And every time that girl touched her, a serpent came out of that girl and bit her. Every time. And he said, my children or a cup of the spirit, this girl who is a witch is a cup of serpents. And I thought, whoa. Every time she touched her, that bit her. And that serpent just came out and bit her. And you could see that she was nothing but a cup of serpents. And they were feeding off of her pain. Why? Because pain is a what? An emotion. So they were creating the pain to get fed. I thought, this is phenomenal. You know, one of the most painful things you can go through is emotional pain. Amen? And the enemy loves to create that. And it says, for so this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins and led away with various lusts. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because they can never get free. See, if you can't come to the knowledge of truth, you can't be free. Now, you may know the truth, but you can't practice it. And that's a difference. He says, now, as Janus and Jabris resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the what? The faith. That means they're disconnected. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be in Antioch, Archeum, and Lystra, which persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly. Here's the kicker. In Christ Jesus will suffer what? Persecution. 
But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must, you must, you must continue in your routine. You must. And the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that even from your born-again experience or childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. You know, in the beginning of this, we talked about, these are all what we call betrayers. Betrayers. And there is a project that the enemy is releasing in a tremendous way. I'm going to call it the Judas Project. He's trying to bring division in homes and everything else, and especially in us first, where we actually begin to tr betray. People begin to betray. They betrayed God's presence. They be begin to betray things. And it starts off with a little thing. They begin to betray their routine. See, that spirit of betrayal is constant now. It's constant. God's warning us and warning us. And we talked about preventing people from getting into his presence. Why? So then the sound mind begins to dismantle. Well, in there is the, one of the things about a dismantling of a sound mind is betrayal. It's where people are more interested in themselves, who used to be faithful to someone else, who used to be a good friend, now betrays you. People that love one another, no longer the love is there, and there's betrayal. And we must be careful and know this. Because the Judas project is from the enemy. It's been going on for a long time. Amen? In Philippians chapter 3. Betrayals, what are they betraying? The life of Christ. To divide houses, to make prey, to individuals with satanic influence of selfishness and bitterness, rejecting the love of God. Hallelujah. Oh, happy days. You know, you're seeing also um, many people betraying each other now in the government, political. I mean, you see it all over the place. They're just betraying one another. Oh, hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. Is everybody there? Speak it with me. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Now, that's a pretty powerful testimony. Here's a dude that had everything. Everything. He was wealthy. He had authority. Inherited all kinds of things. There was nothing this man didn't lack. But when Jesus grabbed hold of him, he realized everything he had wasn't worth anything. See, that's a place where you and I must maintain. Anything God blesses with us with, it's his anyways. Amen? Never let your blessings become priority. Never let anything become a priority to you or push you out of divine order. Amen? Some people are more concerned about their houses and their cars than in God's presence. They spend more time working on all of these little things than they do getting into God's presence. I'm not saying we're not supposed to keep up things. Yeah. But there's a boundary that we got to be careful of not overstepping where it becomes an idol. Amen. Hallelujah. He said this. He said, this is powerful. Yet I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Lord, my 
uh, Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. He knew that if he allowed anything, he would begin to lose that. He wanted this press in more deeper and deeper and deeper. He did not ever want to betray his king. And to be found in him, not around him, not associated with him, but in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may what? Know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. Whoa, yeah. Being conformed to his what? If by any means my, I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I already attained or am already perfected, but I do what? I press on. In other words, I press in. It's not about just pressing on. It's pressing in. Amen? I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me. In other words, old things, entanglements, arguments, frustrations, fears, anything else has passed. Forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forward to those things which are ahead or which is actually associated as above. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mindset. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we've already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the same mindset. Brother, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on what? Earthly things. In other words, they live to live. Does everybody get it? They live to live. You and I are live to die. It sounds pretty crazy, doesn't it? Don't tell your neighbors all about this. Let me tell you, they'll think you're really nuts. But we do. We live to die to what? Self. The world lives to live to themselves. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. V verse 20. For our what? Citizenship is in heaven right now. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. <laughs> Betrayers, enemies of the power of the cross. What happened? See, there's something he was battling with. He wanted to make sure that he maintained an attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. Man, once you begin to alter or fall short or compromise your attitude of gratefulness believe me the enemy waits that's when the grumbling complaining starts why do people grumble and complain number one god's not their fulfillment amen and number two they're ungrateful see you and i must always remember where we came from <laughs> Amen. Where we came from. We don't hold what we've done, but we remember where we've come from. So we can be grateful of what God has done. Amen. Praise God. Yet, we sense this influence and hold fast to the love of truth with understanding of the price of Christ for us that he paid. He's, Paul, Paul was in the area that says, I can't let go, so I press on. To seek his presence, his will, and his life. Seeking his presence, his will, and his life. Paul lived for the life of Christ. 
that means that you must live to die to yourself. In John 13, John 13. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 23, is everybody okay? Anybody okay? That's good. John 13. Hallelujah. In verse 23, 13, 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, <laughs> Satan did what? Entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. What you, but no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. For some thought because Judas had the m money box. Come on, man. Judas was the treasurer. <laughs> that Jesus had seen him buy, or sent him to go buy things we need for the feast. Or that he should give something to the poor. Having received a piece of bread, he then went out immediately and it was night. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. <clears throat> now, this is pretty wild because after receiving the piece of bread, it says Satan entered him. Go to 1 Corinthians 11. What were they doing at the Last Supper? Having communion. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians eleven twenty seven. Everybody there? First Corinthians eleven twenty seven. Now, did Judas betray Jesus? Amen. So he, uh, he opened the door, didn't he? In verse 27, Paul's explaining, he says, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and have slept or died. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So therefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. What was he saying? There's many people who take communion with, un with bitterness. There's many people who take communion with unforgiveness. Many people take communion with offense. Believe me, that is a number one open door, taking communion. What did it say? As soon as they touched the bread, demon entered in. Does everybody understand that? 
This is open door. This is how the enemy accesses us in multiple ways besides just taking communion. He gets us to open a door so he can come in. Never take communion in bitterness. Make sure you repent and self-examine yourself. You might be offended. You might be whatever. Don't take it. Or examine yourself and humble yourself to forgive and bless. Then take it. Amen? That's the best way to do it. Some, again, some take communion in an unworthy manner, unforgiveness, bitterness, backslidden, sinful, so, you know, so forth. They become sick, bound, and die. Opens the door to betrayal spirits. Compromises a common enemy of a Judas project strategies of the evil kingdom. Compromise. Compromise. It is a common enemy of the Judas project. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 14. Judas project. Strategy that the enemy uses. What does he try to do? Bring division. Amen? He tries to bring division. Why? He knows a house divided cannot stand. That's Look at what's going on in this country. Look what's going on in the whole world. Amen? In verse 14. <clears throat> what does it say? Pursue. Pursue. Go after. Peace with all people and holiness without which no one will what? See the Lord looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness bringing up cause trouble and by this many be become what? Defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau who for one morsel of bread, or one morsel of food, sold his what? Birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was what? Rejected. For he had found no place of repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. In other words, he cried because he didn't get what he wanted. But he never truly repented. Amen? Amen. Again, Esau sold his birthright. Many selling their birthright for a morsel of deceptive food and becoming a betrayer. They're giving up things. Listen, especially right now, think about this. Um, there's many people who are about to get evicted from their places. You know, presidents trying to help them. There's many people whose jobs have closed down. They've run out of unemployment. They're doing whatever they can to try to make ends meet and in that circumstance many people will begin to go to the ways of the world you know many people are out of fellowship and because they're out of fellowship they can't even go to the fellowship to get help and they begin to do other things that they shouldn't they begin to sell their birthrights Because without God's presence, there's not a sound mind. Amen? And then they walk in fear. We got to step back and begin to see how the enemy operates. Because if you don't understand how he operates, you won't overcome him. There is a Judas project going on right now. Think about how many people, and even in the division of people that wear masks and those that don't. Heck, I don't want to go into that again. Sheesh. <laughs> Anything to cause division right now. And the powers of darkness are lying incredibly just to cause division. In Matthew 24.
I was talking to an individual today, went out to go give an estimate. And these people, I said, uh, anyways, we started talking about something. He says, yeah, we've been doing church online. I said, bummer. I said, man, you ain't getting the presence of God that way, you know. I don't care if you have to go fellowship somewhere and in somebody's home, y'all worship together. I told him that's one of the things that we refuse to, we always are having some kind of a worship service three times a week or unless something's up. Why? Because it's the presence of God. I mean, these people have been out of fellowship for months. Trying to do online. And so they're getting the letter, but not the presence. Does everybody get it? People think they can survive with TV evangelists. I've asked many people many times, well, where do you fellowship? Oh, I don't. I, I just watch TV. Well, you're an idiot. TV church? You know, I was, I was driving the other day. I've seen drive through churches now. I don't get it. But I give my high five and I drive through. Maybe they do communion in a cup. Here it goes. See you later. drive through church. It's not church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Verse 3, we know this. Now as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him in privately saying, tell us when these things will be. What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Well, man, we got signs already. <laughs> Amen. They're on every street corner. Jesus is coming. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed, you don't get deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. Lots of fires. And these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation. They're going to attempt to kill you. And you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Then many will be what? Offended and will what? Betray. They will what? Betray. They're going to betray the presence of God. They're going to betray the church. And they're going to betray mankind. Except for the worldly ones. <laughs> they're going to betray the body. And that many will betray one another and hate one another. So once the betrayal starts, hatred steps in. Does everybody get it? Now people are hating and don't even know why they hate. But they're being programmed now. This is a mind control thing. It says the demonic airwaves. Now they're hating. Then many will, false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So it's going to start with betrayal, hatred, and the love will be gone. But he who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Betrayal, hatred, cold love, murder will grow more and more and more. This is the Judas Project right there. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, verse 9. And you know you can sense the atmosphere, the attacks. 
You can sense it if you're sensitive enough. If not, then you're caught in it. But you can sense it. You can sense that irritation. You can sense that. You better keep your restraining belts on before you choke somebody. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Verse 9. It says, Hell from beneath it is excited about you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all the chief ones of the earth. It is raised up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations. They shall speak and say to you, Have you also become as weak as we? Yeah. <laughs> Have you become like us? Your pomp has brought you down to hell, and the sound of your stringed instruments, the maggot, is spread under you, and worms cover you. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. That's who he's talking about. Son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the far of the sides of the north. I will also ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. I want you to know that the Nephilim race all believes that themselves, as individuals, gods. This is how they actually believe themselves. Rockefeller admitted it. Many, all of these elite, wealthy, they believe they're gods, like Pharaoh. They all believe this. They believe that they're God's gift to God and to mankind. Here's his response. Yet, homie, you shall be brought down to hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, this, is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? Who did not open the house of his of his prisoners. <laughs> all the kings of the nation, all of them sleep in glory, every one in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trotten underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial, burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The road of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his offspring. Does everybody get it? His children. This is the seed of the serpent. This is what we're seeing right now. All of these who are proclaiming to be gods and that are promoting the Judas project, God says you're going to get slain. Because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with what? With cities. He said, I'm not going to allow that to happen. Lucifer and his seed of evil entities and human bodies shall be destroyed. He is the original betrayer. Amen? This is where it all comes from. He is the original betrayer. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were needing the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Why? Because Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He was God's right-hand man. You were, on, you were the anointed cherub who covers the universe with praise. I establish you, you are on the holy mountain of God, which is known as the earth. 
He walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. In other words, he was there when everything was created. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Now look at this, because this is what's happening right now. He says, by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing off the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground, and I lay you before kings that they may gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries. You know, not filling them is defiling them. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Why? Because then it's used for something other than what it's supposed to be used for. You defile your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your mist, and it devoured you. I turned you to ashes upon the earth, in the sight of all who saw you, all who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. So we know the end result. Amen. <laughs> the betrayer will be destroyed. He defiled sanctuaries, no gatherings, promotings of evil, violence, selfish, desires of killing, and innocent blood. We see much of that, especially with the unborn. In Ephesians chapter 4. The Judas Project. Ephesians 4.20. You know, forsaking the anointing is a terrible thing. That's falling from the faith also. In verse 20 it says, but you've not learned Christ or you've not learned the anointing or to be led by the anointing. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful loss or desires and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and your thoughts that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give to him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace, which is God's plan to the hearer. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. Learning to live in harmony with the Spirit of God is essential. Amen? Does everybody understand it? It's an area, you know, so we want to avoid open doors of betrayal. We want to avoid open doors, it says, uh, uh, of, you know, a, a anything in the enemy to bring a compromise. We battle these things all the time. But the more you're filled with the Spirit of God, the more sensitive you'll be, the more discerning you'll have. You'll know ahead of time before it gets near you. You can sense you've got long-distance radar. Amen? In Psalm 9, <clears throat> 
Hallelujah. Yes. Powerful psalm. Psalm 9, let's speak it together. I will praise you, O Lord, with my what? Whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. Those are testimonies. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. Why? Because you brought the presence in. For you have maintained my right and cause. You maintain my right and cause. Why? Because you're maintaining his presence. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. You have rebuked the nations. You have destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Oh, enemy, destructions are finished forever. For you, are, you have destroyed cities, even their memory has perished. But the Lord shall endure forever, for he has prepared his throne for what? Judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness, and he shall minister judgment for the peoples in uprightness. In other words, he will bring vengeance for us. Lord, will also be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who what? Who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from, the, from those who hate me. You who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell of your praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made, in the net which they hid. Their own foot is caught. God's snaring them not right now. It's, we call it the... What, the boomerang effect. Everything the powers of darkness are trying to do, it goes right back to them. Everything the Democratic Party does, they just snare themselves. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged in your sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. He says, I will praise you with all my... This is a defensive, protective psalm. He's saying, with all my heart, I'm praising you. Why? Because your presence is what's going to protect me. Amen. Psalm 141. That's why it's good to ask the Lord to give you a psalm every morning. Lord, what psalm do you want me to speak today? It also gives you an opportunity to practice his voice. Amen. Psalm 141, let's speak it. It's a prayer for safety. Lord, I cry out to you, make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense, a lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips and do not incline my heart to any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. And do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, it shall be kindness. Let him rebuke me, it shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. <clears throat> For still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff. And they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave. And when one plows and breaks up the earth. 
But my eyes are upon you, Lord. You are the Lord my God. In you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute from your presence. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me, from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into it their own nets while I what? I escape safely. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. That's an escape prayer, you know what I'm saying? How many of y'all know God always makes a way of escape for us? But you know when you're not listening, when you're not hearing, when you're not sensitive, you know what you do? You step on the trap. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Verse 1. We're so in prayers of protection. Glory to God. Is everybody there? Preserve me, O God, for in you I do what? I put my trust. My soul you have said to the Lord. You are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom I delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. And we've heard this multiple times. No, you can't set him before you without God's presence. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, my glory rejoices, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my whole in, in torment. You won't leave my soul in what? torment, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures of forevermore. So we see his right hand is not only protecting, but releasing. Job 20. Job 20 and verse 12. Avoiding the trap of the Judas project is essential. Verse 12, let's speak it. Job 20. We're in the employment section now. Though evil is sweet in his mouth. What's he talking about? Verse 12, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's talking about the wicked. He says, though evil is sweet in his mouth, and he hides it under his tongue. Though he spares it and does not forsake it, but still keeps it in his mouth. Yet his food in his stomach turns sour. It becomes a cobra of venom within him. He swallows down riches and vomits them up again. God casts them out of his belly. He will suck the poison of cobras. The viper's tongue will slay him. He will not see streams, the rivers flowing with honey and cream. He will restore that for which he labored. He will not swallow it down from the proceeds of business. He will get no enjoyment, for he has oppressed and forsaken the poor. He has violently seized the house which he did not build. Because he knows no quietness in his heart, 
he will not save anything he desires. Nothing is left for him to eat, therefore his well-being will not last. In his self-sufficiency, he will be in distress. Every hand of misery will come against him. When he is about to fill his stomach, God will cast on him the fury of his wrath and will rain on him while he is eating. He will flee from the iron weapon. A bronze bow will pierce him through. It is drawn, comes out of the body. Yes, a glittering point comes out of his gull. Terrors come upon him. Total darkness is reserved for his treasures. And unfanned fire will consume him. It shall go ill with him who is left in his tent. The heavens will reveal his iniquity. The earth will rise up against him. The increase of his house will depart, and his goods will follow, flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion from God for the wicked man. Heritage appointed to him by God. They will not escape. Amen. They will not escape. That is the portion of the wicked. I want to read to you something. It's a word from the Lord. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto day reveals knowledge. There's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through the heaven and through the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one heaven, one end of heaven, and its circuit to the other end. And there's nothing hidden from his heat. Nothing hidden from his heat. That's why there is that fire everyone's going through. The Lord of hosts says, I will release my heat with refining fire. This was the prophetic word. For 2020. I will release my heat with refining fire. And everyone shall feel its presence. Conviction and renewing. To my warriors I will increase the flame with a torch of righteousness. To execute my justice in righteousness. The heat of truth carried by the, my torch of righteousness, will push back the enemy and expose their agenda. Those who choose to settle for being lukewarm will miss this opportunity unless they repent and come out from among the entanglements of the world. My flaming light will penetrate the areas of darkness where mankind has not seen or heard. My warriors will burn down the walls of deception. And the word evil will become a reality to the world. I am creating an unrest to those involved in corruption and destruction against my chosen people. I've laid traps to catch them in the acts of deception. And the world will see hidden agendas they promote and their source of influence. This will be a year of double fulfillment and a great exchange will spread throughout the nations. For the prayers of destiny released by my children have reached my nostrils as a sweet-smelling aroma. So I will release a request of promise from my mouth that will not return void. Do not be afraid of the storms that reach the coastlands or the whirling winds of fire that spread through the lands. And we're seeing a lot of that right now. For these are my storms to counteract the false storms where the process of exchange will begin. So we know that this is the beginning of the exchange process. We're in it. I mean, it's glorious. Even though there's fire and all kinds of stuff going on, things are being exchanged. Right now, God is storing up. He's taking hold of the wicked storehouses and putting them aside till the storm is through and then he's releasing them to his people. I will exchange seats and positions of authority that promote evil agendas of lawlessness with righteousness. And I will release those that have been taken imprisoned unlawfully. I will melt the walls of denominations and reunify my body as, get, as a gathering net of salvation. I will exchange false sanctuary cities for my sanctuary, bringing an escape to those who have been taken and been forsaken. 
I have begun to dismantle doctrines of tradition that have corrupted and misled my people. These lies of deception will be exchanged for truth, and many will be free to follow me. I will purify the atmosphere and increase my presence that will carry provision, strategy, and healing. The enemies of the cross will increase their lies and accusations while they attempt to hide from me, setting themselves up for capture. The great exchange of wickedness for righteousness will spread globally, not completely removing wickedness until I come. I will use the wicked to destroy evil. <laughs> And they won't understand as they turn on one another. There is no true loyalty in wickedness, only self-gain. The, veil, uh, the veils of blindness will be opened to many because of fear and then removed because of salvation. And they will lead many out of darkness into my glorious light. The exchange of currency and wealth will be released Affecting the global market, altering strategies of fulfillment, combating aggressive agendas. The prophets of Baal that control media will be exposed and exchanged because many will turn away from their lies and associations. I am setting up my media of information that has been hidden, but will now be exposed and understood. Darkness will call my media conspiracy and attempt to debunk its true agenda not realizing they are promoting truth and arming the world with reality. 2020 is symbolized as good eyesight, but I am releasing insight into the true interpretation where perception of reality will spread, promoting the fear of the Lord. This season of time will come with a cost, and many will be taken home, not willing to pay the price of cooperation and denial of self because of the in his way. I will exchange judges of corruption for justice and righteous, and those that hide behind my name for those that serve my name. 2020 will be a time of completion and an entrance into a new beginning where my people will have a higher platform. Welcome to the year of exchange. Let's give God the glory, amen. You know, as the Holy Spirit was giving me this teaching today, he said, pull back out the prophecy. And man, as I began to read it, I thought, oh my God, this is phenomenal. We're in it. It's happening right now, the 2020 year of exchange. Everything is being prepared for us, but we cannot fall under the project, that Judas project, to bring division and hatred, to bring violence. Amen. Amen. So the people do not betray one another. We're to fight for one another. Amen? Fight. This is a time for battle like we've never battled before. If you're not willing to be in the battle, you're going to become a casualty. Amen? Quit looking carnally. Don't fall in the fear of lack. God is able to do far above all we could ever ask or think. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us through the fire and preparing us for great and awesome things that are about to happen. Because you said it, we believe it. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay blessed.